welcome to Kids Church. It's been a lovely wet week this week and I want to ask you, how did you go catching your thoughts this week? Did you catch the good ones and think about them? And did you catch those bad ones and throw them out? God wants us to have his peace all the time, but there's something that we have to do and that is to not be anxious about anything and then if we do that, God will give us his peace. And then there's something else we have to do, and that is to think about good things. Now, thoughts are coming at us all the time. We are always thinking about something. So it's really important that we only keep and think about good things. And those bad things that cause us to fear and worry, we've got to throw them out. Now, it's really great to know how big God is that there is nothing that takes him by surprise. And if we pray to God, God will help us and he will tell us what to do and he's given us his word and if we do that, then we can have an amazing life. We can have his peace and his joy all the time. So the teaching this week is from Colin Buchanan and he's going to talk about that, about how much how big God is, how much he loves us, and how important it is to pray to God. So I hope you really enjoy the teaching this week, and I'll see you next time. Bye. G'day, I'm Colin, and um, I was going to ask you a question. Are there things that you can control I know there are a lot of things that we can't control, we can't change them. But the, there are a lot of things that you know, we can control. And in fact, I wanted to show you something. I've got my phone here. It's amazing what phones can do nowadays. I, I'll show you. I can control my garage door. Uh, this one, garage door, uh, let me see, up. <laughs> Good, okay, garage door down. It's good, isn't it? Okay, garage door down, and garage door up. Amazing, what else can I control? Um, I can control, oh, the air conditioner. It's a bit hot in here, so uh, air conditioner on. Uh, A bit colder, that's, that's, no, that's getting, it's getting a bit cold. Uh, air condition warmer, w- warmer, warmer, warmer. Ah, it's, oh, 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 stop, turn air conditioner off. Ah, stopped it, very good. Um, I know, I'll use Silly, Silly's quite handy. Hey Silly, turn on the television. Ding, ding, turning television on. All right, so you can hear it. Hey, silly, turn the television up. Silly, turn the television down. Thank you, silly. That's enough. Uh, Yeah, oh, I just remembered. Hey, silly, remind me to buy eggs. (laughs) There is a lot that we can control and a lot that we cannot control. But I wonder, do you know who controls everything, who knows all things and nothing takes him by surprise? I think you know the answer. God. And in fact, there's a, there's a Bible verse about that. Psalm 90 verse 2 says, from everlasting to everlasting, forever and ever, you are God. Now, I want to sing a song called Nothing takes God by surprise, because nothing does. All right, here we go. In the beginning, God spoke a word, and that's how the world began. And every moment till the end of time is part of his wonderful plan. No, no, who? That's your bit. Nothing takes God by surprise. No, no, who? That's it. He is sovereign. He's in control. Nothing takes God by surprise. No, no, no. Right. Good bits, the bad bits, and all of your. Jesus can carry you through. 
Jackson. <laughs> to chance. That's why we call him Lord. Because nothing takes God by surprise. No, no. <laughs> nothing takes God by surprise. No, no. Good no no knowing. Now I thought of something else, something from the Bible, because God is in control, and Jesus, God's Son, says something wonderful to his people in Revelation, in the book of Revelation. I've got my Bible here. It's another part of the Bible to read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Jesus says to his frightened people, I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death. Whoa, how precious. Did you notice that Jesus said that his people had to do something? They had to look. Yes, that's right. And when they looked, they could see that Jesus, who used to be dead, was alive. That's right. So we look to God and that life that he lives becomes our life by faith. So look to God and believe and look to God in his word. That's so important. We should do that all the time and look to God by praying to him. We need to learn to stop what you're doing and pray to Jesus. Stop what you're doing and pray to Jesus. Stop what you're doing and pray to Jesus. Mighty, mighty Jesus. When you're laughing, <laughs> pray to Jesus. When you're crying, <laughs> pray to Jesus. When you're bored, <sighs> whatever, pray to Jesus. Mighty, mighty Jesus. When you're noisy, noisy, ah! pray to Jesus. When you're cranky, Oh, cranky, pray to Jesus. When you're hmm, naughty, pray to Jesus. Mighty, mighty Jesus. When you're oh, hurting, pray to Jesus. When you're uh, uh, frightened, pray to Jesus. When you're... When you're sleepy, um. oh, sorry. Pray to Jesus, mighty, mighty Jesus. There's a chorus. Big, big, good, good, mighty, mighty Jesus. Big, big, good, good, mighty, mighty Jesus. Big, big, good, good, mighty, mighty Jesus. Mighty, 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 mighty Jesus. He's mighty and he's good. How precious. And we should pray to him right now. Let's stop what we're doing and pray to Jesus. Will you pray with me? I close my eyes to help me think about what I'm saying. Our dear Lord and Saviour Jesus, our dear mighty, mighty God, we praise you because you are from everlasting 
to everlasting. You are the first and the last. Nothing takes you by surprise. Mighty Jesus, you died and look, you rose again. Help us to look by faith, to look at your word and to look in prayer. We pray all these things in our Saviour Jesus' name. Amen. I like that verse in that last one. When you're sleepy, pray to Jesus. When Hey Siri, I've fallen asleep. Hello, welcome to my lab. This morning I'm going to be doing another experiment. I have grabbed some things from the kitchen got lemon juice, water and bicarb soda. Now I have made an indicator from red cabbage and you'll see that when I add these it's going to change colour. That's pretty cool isn't it? Shall we have a look? Okay, first the lemon juice. Wow, that's gone like a pinky colour. Now I'm going to add my water. Hmm, no different. Bicarb soda. Oh wow, that's kind of gone a bluey colour, hasn't it? Well, there you go. Okay, so we have been learning, haven't we, that we can speak to God anytime, anywhere. Because God loves us so much, he loves it when we spend time with him and when we talk to him. Especially when we feel a bit afraid or a bit worried, we can just pray to God and ask him to help us. We're also learning that as we read our super books, the Bible, this will help us as well when we're feeling really scared or worried. Did you know that all through the Bible, Jesus and Paul talks to us about not worrying about things and not to be afraid and when we do worry and we're scared to cast all our cares onto God because God wants to carry them for us so that we don't have to be afraid. Now should we see if Phoebe wants to come out and say hello? I wonder how his week's gone. I wonder if he's had a good week. Should we ask him? Okay, Bibi, would you like to come out and say hello to all the girls and boys this morning? Oh, okay, <gasps> okay, awesome. Come and say hi. Hi, hi, Bibi. How are you? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Bibu, how's your last week been? Has it been okay or good? Oh yeah, it's been okay. Um, when we had the storms, though, it was a little bit scary. I got scared at night time because the wind was howling and the rain was coming down really hard and I started to get really scared. Oh, so what did you do, Bibu? Well, I just started to talked to God and I started to whisper the name Jesus and that really helped me and I asked God to help me not to be so afraid. Wow, Bibu, that's awesome. Did you know that Jesus is a very powerful name and sometimes that's all we need to say and that can just really help us. Yeah, when I said the name Jesus, I started to feel really peaceful and calm. Oh, that's great, Bibi. <laughs> well, funny that you've been talking.
talking about the storms actually because it was a pretty big storm that we had at the beginning of the week, wasn't it? The waves were crashing everywhere and the wind was blowing and the trees were blowing and the rain was coming down so hard, wasn't it? It kind of was a little bit scary at times. Well, Bibu and girls and boys, we are going to be looking in our Bibles today at when Jesus calms the storm. Did you know that he went in the boat with his disciples and Jesus fell asleep? And all of a sudden it says in the Bible that a furious storm came and the waters were raging. Wow, that sounds pretty full on, doesn't it? And the waves were crashing onto the boat. Oh, what happened? Wow, the disciples woke up Jesus and said, teacher, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? And Jesus, he got up and you know what he did? What did he do? He rebuked the wind and the waves and he said, be still, be quiet. And then all of a sudden everything stopped and it went back to being calm again. And he said to his disciples, why were you afraid? Why were you scared? Didn't you trust me that everything's going to be okay and that I will take care of you? So we'll be looking at this today in our Bibles, okay? So if you'd like to come with me. Jesus had been teaching all day long and he was really tired. He and his friends got into a boat and sailed across a big lake. Because Jesus was so tired, he lay down in the boat and went to sleep. All of a sudden, a big storm came. The, the waves splashed really high and the wind blew really hard. Jesus' friends were scared the boat would sink. They ran to Jesus and shouted, Wake up! Wake up! Jesus woke up and he told the storm, Be quiet! Be still! Then something amazing happened. The wind and the waves went away and the water was calm and quiet. Jesus told his friends they didn't have to be scared. Jesus told his friends they can trust him. You can trust Jesus too. He wants to take care of you even when you are scared. Can you say this after me? When I'm scared, I will trust Jesus. Can you see how important it is for us to try and trust Jesus? I know sometimes it can be really hard to trust Jesus when we get scared or worried, but God really wants us to be able to do this, to trust him. And as we read our Bibles as well, this teaches us to trust in God and he promises that he will look after us. He only wants good things for us. Okay. So remember that we can talk to God anytime, anywhere, especially when we're feeling a bit afraid because God loves us so much. He loves to spend time with us. So remember our little saying that we've got, when we pray, our God hears, set us free from all our fears. Can you say that with me? When we pray, our God hears, set us free from all our fears. Okay, now we're going to finish off with our memory verse. I pray to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Psalm 34 verse 4. Did you hear that, Bebe? Okay, so now if you'd like to just bow your heads in prayer, I'll just say a little prayer for us. Okay. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you love us so much and that you love it when we, that when we talk to you and we spend time with you. Thank you, Lord God, that you are teaching us that we can trust in you and that we can talk to you, especially when we're scared, Lord God. Thank you for your love and kindness towards us. Amen. 
Okay, so I know that I'm going to be seeing you really, really soon. Maybe you can go and do a couple more experiments with someone that can help you. And I hope that you have an exciting week this week. And remember, speak to God. Be thankful for something. Okay, bye. Five Small Stones by Margaret Cagle I am David of Bethlehem, Jesse's son. That shepherd boy, yes, I'm the one. I'm going to the Philistine camp today. My mission, I have a giant to slay. God will help me, I know he will. He will help me, this giant to kill. I killed a lion and I killed a bear, but unproved armour I can't wear. With a slingshot to the brook I'll go. I need some stones to kill this foe. I see five smooth ones over there. I will choose these stones with care. Now Goliath is cursing me with names. He must think this is fun and games. God will defeat this big evil man. Who can defeat God? No man ever can. God, I cannot kill this giant alone. Please guide my slingshot and this stone. As quick as a flash and a ziggity zing, I shot a stone straight for my sling. I hit his forehead above his eyes. As he fell, I heard the Philistine sighs. With Goliath's sword, I cut off his head. Yes, you can say now he's really dead. For giants of sin you need to kill. Ask God to help you and he will. Find five smooth stones, daughter or son. God will help you just the right one. Memorize Bible verses and they'll be used for giants of sin to kill. Hide God's word deep in your heart and defeat the devil from the start. When this feeling